Hi everyone. Um, first of all, I'm sorry for being the last person between uh, you and uh, Tacos afterwards, but bear with me. I hope I'll be quick and clear for that. Um, so first of all, let me introduce myself. I'm Daya and I'm a senior software engineer at Algolia. So you're here before you're you have already implemented search, you're looking to implement search, or you are curious about search. Uh, and I'll just start with that. Search is hard. And to clarify, search is hard because when users are expecting best-in-class search like they found in Google, Amazon, or Netflix, when they encounter a subpar search experience, they are quick to move out and to move on and to go uh, to, to leave your website or application. And why are there so many components that make search difficult? Well, for starters, on the server side, you have to take into account responsiveness. You want your search results to come quickly and to come quickly whatever the location they're in. Maybe in the subway, maybe where the connection isn't great. You might also want to take into account user mistakes that they might do when they're looking for something. So you might want to implement some sort of type of tolerance like we see here in Amazon. And on the front end side, you have to look at least uh, at four steps when you want to implement a search feature in the life cycle of your application. First, you have to request the data from the server. If you do it yourself, how will you request that using Axios, Fetch, whatever the library you want to use, what, or even web, etc. Then you have to re receive the results and maybe create and manage a state. And in the same vein, how will you do that? Will you use a library? Will you do it yourself? And you have to display those results. How will you handle pagination? How will you handle caching? So many questions that might make uh, an end result that is subpar. And you listen to changes that might come from the query box or that might come from filters that you want to refine on. And the cycle starts again for the entire duration of your application and it has to be stable for all of that. So to prevent you from taking care of that, from handling that and focusing on better things in your application, we have a solution and it comes, it works in pair with the Algolia Search API and it's called React Instant Search Hooks. It's a set of UI components that you can use to build your application in a quick and easy way. It's a new implementation of our previous React Instant Search library that lets you use the same hooks that we use to power the widgets that we provide. And if you're not familiar with React or you don't work with React on a day-to-day -day basis, that's all right. We also provide a lot of other libraries in the Instant Search family uh, to let you power uh, web and native frameworks. So let's build search. Here we are going to put ourselves in a situation where we are tasked to build a search experience. And for that, I move on to some live coding. So this is the, this is not the end result. I can <laughs> guarantee you, I hope, but this is the starting point. We have like a skeleton of what we want to achieve. We want to have a search input on the top, which is in what we want to be a header. And then below we have our search page, which is composed of a three column layout with filters on the left and the right and the products in the center. And that's what our main entry point looks like for now. It's pretty empty with our search input placeholder. So what's the first step when you want to integrate React Citizen Search Hook into your application? Well, it's as you do with a lot of other libraries, you add them to your dependency list. So I've already done that for you. And then you can import them in your application like that. So now you have an instant search component that's gonna be your main widget that's gonna wrap your application. And you also have uh, the Algolia search import, import, which is the link between instant search and the Algolia search API. And so for that, we have to first create this connection to the search client. All right. And to create this connection, you, uh, you set an app ID and an API key like uh, Chuck showed you earlier with recommend. And then it's as easy as setting those information to the instant search widget, which will also require the index name, which is where your Algolia products are located. 
And if I move this inside, now I have an application with instant search, uh, uh, which is powered with instant search. But it doesn't do anything right now. We, we need to add some widgets for that. So let's move on and quickly add a search box that is conveniently named search box. Um, and you don't have to know that by heart. We have a comprehensive API reference that lets you learn step by step what are the widgets, what are their parameters, and what are the possibilities offered with them. So we can add a placeholder that's sensible here. And let's move on to our search page. Here we have separated the search box and the search page because we can imagine we want to have a search box for our whole application, but our search results are uh, located in a specific part. And to display the results from our query, we have another widget that's called hits here that we can import easily. All right, let's save all of this and take a look at what we have. OK, that's not very pretty right now. We have uh, this thing on the top, which is not very well styled, with a, a magnifying glass. And we have a JSON, uh, a stringified JSON representation of our data, which we might want to transform a little bit. And so here you have multiple options. You can use some set of CSS styles that we can provide for you. But in this case, we have a website with some uh, defined design guidelines, so we can use them. And we have already created some class names to, to allow us to customize the different widgets that we are adding to our application. So let's do that for our search box. We can define a class name for the whole widget, or we can define class names for all the components inside our widgets, and that's what we're going to do right now. So we have multiple elements inside our widget. We have the root component, the input box, and some uh, buttons. And when we refresh that, we now have a better visual style for our search box. And we can search data. You see that the JSON moves. Everything is linked together. And you didn't have to create the, the bounds, the links, for that explicitly. It's all because we are wrapped in an instant search application. All right, let's take care of those hits now, for all those results. If I move back here, I see that the hits need to have some more parameters to be able to render something that I want. So for that, you can define a custom component that will be rendered and that will be fed with data from the server. And I'm just going to have to import it manually here. All right, so I have already designed the product card. And if you take a look at that, all right, let me refresh. OK, we see that it's a bit different, but it's not still what we want to have here. We want to have a grid layout, which we'll add in a few seconds. And then we want to have those, the data uh, coming through the product card component. So to add the grid layout, we can add the class names a class name, sorry, for the list container of our hits widget. So that's this. That's great. And then we can move on to the product card component and define an object that's, uh, that contains a hit property. And the hit is the exact representation of the data you have stored with Algolia. And now you can easily replace this fake data with real data coming from Algolia. All right. And let's make the price dynamic as well. OK. Let's take a look at what we have. Now we have powered, in a few minutes, an experience containing a serve box and uh, product results that work really well together. And this is also an as you type search, so the effect is impressive for that. Uh, what we can do next? We can check out the filters. We can maybe filter by brand. We have this data, so let's do that. If I go back to the search page, search component, I can easily add a heading here. 
to inform that we're going to filter by brand, and then add one of the many, many uh, widgets that we provide. And in this case, it's a menu that's going to allow us to refine on the brand attributes of our products. And let's add some styles here as well. No. All right. And just like that, we can now also refine on brand on top of the query. So if we check out the Ralph Lauren brand, and if we want to specify maybe shorts here, you can see that everything is working together as well. And finally, what about the hooks that I've talked about earlier? Well, well, if we take a look at the if we take a look at the sort by widget here that we want to add, a sort by widget just for information is a way to change the way your uh, data is sorted. And in in Algolia, you do that by uh, defining uh, a number of indices, and the indices will be sorted by the criteria you define on uh, on the dashboard or with the API. So for that, you have to specify uh, an array of indices with some labels. So I have three indices here. I have the default index, which is the re relevance index. And I have two indices that allow me to sort by price from low to high and from high to low. And if we take a look at that, beside the unstyled component part, we see that it's a select input dropdown. So it's nice, but it's not what the product designer wanted. He wanted to have a, a behavior similar to what we have for brands. And now we can use hooks to completely take over the rendering of this widget and create our own widget with the same data that powers the sort by uh, widget that we provide. So we can remove that. I'll keep the items definition for later. And then if we go here before the return, for, uh, the return uh, statement, we can now add a hook here that's the same that's what's working be below the sort by widget. We can feed it the same data regarding the items, and it will allow us to get a list of options, a current refinement, and a refine method. And this method will be used to update the index that will be used to power the results here. And then you can create your, ma your markup from scratch if you want. Here we are used inspiration from the menu. So we're going to reuse the same class names that we have used for the menu. And we can iterate on the options here to add. All right. To add list items. And just here we can set in React, we have to set a key to allow us to iterate on arrays. That's going to be the value. And I'm going forward with uh, some of the class names uh, that will allow us to underline the current refined item. So for that, I'm going to define a class name. And all right. And finally, I can add, I can add an event handler here that will allow me to refine on the index that I want. And if I go back to uh, my page, I see now that I have the same uh, design besides the heading that was added uh, otherwise. And I can click on an option and it will allow me to fetch uh, results by different criteria here. All right, so that's it for the live demo. Let's go back to the slides. In summary, what did we learn? We, we learned that to add React instance search hooks to your application, you just need a set of dependencies, a search client, and the library itself. You can wrap your application with the instant search widget, which will then allow you to add some sets of uh, provided widget, of, of widget that we provide with the library. And if you want to go further, you can customize the widget, the widget looks with some CSS classes. And if you really want to take over the whole behavior, you can use the hooks that will allow you to get the data from Algolia and reuse them to, uh, to, to what you desire. There are so many other use cases you can achieve with React Instance Search Hooks, and we don't have the time to go over them. But uh, there are some links he 
here that will let you know more about them. You can delegate the routing to React Instance Search Hooks, which will allow you to take control over the URL and then maybe share uh, a search results page with already predefined uh, refinements. You can allow React Instance Search Hooks to work with server-side rendering in React. And you can make really good uh, native, uh, or at least React native applications with the React Instance Search Hooks as well. If you want to know more, you can check out the Getting Started Guide on the Algolia documentation website. And as I said earlier, we have a full API reference to uh, learn all about the widgets and their parameters. And that's it for me. Thank you for your listening. Awesome. Thank you, Daya, for that. Appreciate it. So um, again, we've got the, the block out into the crowd. If anyone has any questions for Daya around um, React hooks, around instant search, uh, any of the things he talked about here. Um, I, I definitely love this as a mechanism for sort of overriding the rendering and being able to sort of build your own. It's such a nice, simple way to do it. It's a very React way to do it. Mm -hmm. So appreciate that. Um, so anyone with any questions, this is an opportunity. Right there, you got it. the block. Yep, if you can talk into it, I appreciate it. Test. Okay. Speak into the block. Hello. Hi. Uh, I was wondering, can you achieve the exact same visual results without any classes? Can you? Well, if you want to achieve the same result without visual result, uh, you'll need to uh, find a way to customize it with CSS. So we provide a, a set of uh, defined class names that you can use. You, it's not necessary to add your own class names, but we have a set of predetermined class names that you can use to override uh, the, the design with yeah, them. Yeah, my question is, was actually, can you achieve the exact same result without using, um, let me rephrase, is uh, class names or the class names the only way to customize the visual aspect of what you yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> I, I understand, but um, maybe um, you you can. I think you you need class names for that because the styling will be bound to class names here. You can't directly set inline styles on our widget, for for example. So in the current API, you need class names. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. Any other questions? Everyone is hungry. Everyone's hungry. Uh, All right. Actually, I have one last question. So maybe I will. Can I? Yeah, go ahead. Go if for it. If it's too long, just let, right, let's see. <laughs> like, I was wondering why class names? Like, why class names? What, what would be, for example, an alternative for class names in a front end environment? I mean, if you are, if you are talking about React, since, the, since you show us the React component, I mean, I mean, there are other ways besides. To do, for example, CSS yeah, in GS or. For example, I don't know. To, I don't know, maybe render props just giving us the what we need and I can use uh, whatever components that I want, you know, those kind of things. Yeah, yeah that's an interesting uh, detail. But for that, you, you would, yeah, exactly. Thanks, you saw. For that, you would need to use hooks to take real uh, control over the whole experience that you want to provide. So for example, if you take a look at the, the last example, the sort by example, I reused some of the class names that I had with men the menu, but you really would, could use another component that is pre-designed, uh, that, that has another design with the hooks. So you have the list of elements, and you can refine with the method the, in the manner that you prefer. Thank you. Thanks. Cool. All right. Thank you very much, Daya.